Hey guys, how's it going? Grubby here from BlizzCon 2019. Just finished with the Reforged Deep Dive development panel, which not everyone may have been able to watch. So I wanted to take the major takeaways that you may not have seen yet and bring them to you right away. Let's start with first things first. The beta came out four days ago. Undead will be joining next week. A week or two after that, Night Elf will be joining as well. Alongside with these beta updates, they'll be rolling out extra game modes like 3v3, 4v4, AT, random team, and uh, let's see, did I say FFA yet? And the world editor will also be joining in one of these two updates so that the map making community can start setting their teeth into porting some of the best games that were made in Warcraft 3 and maybe make some new ones. One really cool thing to hear was that they're giving new toys and tools to the map making community so that some of the things they used to be able to do in a janky way they can now do in an officially supported way an example was before you couldn't add 5 hp to a unit in progress while you're in a custom map so they actually had to create hundreds of units each one having 5 hp increments more than the previous unit they are like unique units and then essentially when you get more health what the map actually did was replace the unit with another unit that has 5 hp more this is going to be a lot easier for the map makers. I don't personally make maps, but I heard this and I know that they are listening to the map makers in that sense. And it's great that they can get tools like this. Now let's talk a little bit about Micro. The underlying engine of Warcraft 3 and Reforged is still the, sa uh, still the same. So it was important for me to see that the, the Micro is going to be the same, surrounds, body blocks, uh, pathing, and it is. It's great news for anyone that has uh, played Pro before or is aspiring Pro or likes to watch pro games. High level games in Warcraft 3 come because of the micro, so it's important that that remains the same or it wouldn't be quite the same game anymore, and it is. The differences sometimes is where the model may look a little different. You may have seen that the raider, instead of having a sword in front of him, has his sword on his shoulder. Uh, hitboxes, when you click a unit, don't only involve their selection circle, but also def definitely different parts of their body. They're not entirely done with those yet, and they will continue to improve upon it. I'm gonna give feedback to them as well, wherever possible, in order to help them shape up on that sense as well. <laughs> when you click the Sword of the Raider, that should intuitively be correct that the Raider will be selected. So that's important. Now let's talk about art style. Art style of the unit is, uh, in some cases, very similar to the original, in some cases, different. Of course, Warcraft 3 Classic, to many of us that love and play the game now, we didn't really care about the graphics that much, but it does represent a unique and huge opportunity to bring in new players into the game. Let's be kind to them as well and help teach them the game, because it's easy for us to rem forget uh, how noob we were when we began. So if we get new players coming out of StarCraft 2, I'm going to try and do a guide for StarCraft 2 players that, okay, here are the differences, you know, expanding in StarCraft 2 doubles your income. In Warcraft 3, it doesn't necessarily because of the upkeep. So I think these are really interesting guide tools that we can make for uh, players coming over. And let's all do our part to help new players learn the game. Uh, some of the models uh, are not universally met yet with great enthusiasm by some people, but they are doing something with your feedback. I've seen that firsthand. I've seen it in the improvements that are already happening in the beta. And I'm personally very confident that they're gonna be able to make the game look fantastic. Different from Warcraft 3, uh, and it will take some time maybe to get used to it, but fantastic, yes. I guess my only concern is like whether they can do that in time since you know we're in October, we're in November now of 2019, and the game is set to release this year. But what is great to hear is that they're planning for years of post-release uh, support. And on the panel, they said, let's get ready for the next uh, 16, 17 years. So uh, more release uh, support is coming up. So that's gonna be great. A ranged team will be back and I'll probably be playing some two on two on stream as well. Let's talk a little bit about the campaign and then we'll get to some multiplayer aspects as well. And last year with the campaign, we saw a different version of the purging of Stratholm. It seems like they've drawn back a little bit from that again. They are going to mostly keep the campaign in a more similar vein as it has been in Warcraft 3 Classic. But I did hear that more than eight maps were uh, significantly changed for the look to be more similar to World of Warcraft. Another thing they've done is they've done a lot of work with cameras so that maybe you can zoom in, like they're zooming you in deeper to give a better feel so you can really see the models up close. And those in-game cinematics, no, I should say in-game cutscenes that really cover a very large part of the storytelling in Warcraft 3, those are gonna be looking a lot better. 
we actually ended the panel with a 20 second teaser of the newly reimagined fight between Arthas and Illidan that was so epic in a way, but it was over all too soon. That is going to be a longer fight with new in-game cinematics with all the new models. The crowd loved it. Maybe you've already seen it uh, so far, but uh, yeah, I, I've seen the whole thing. It's, it's, it's amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that. I also had a chance both on the panel and outside the panel to have a chat with uh, Michael Scipioni, aka Skip. He is lead of the balance in Warcraft 3. So I kind of wanted to get his philosophy on how he views balance at the higher and the lower level. And it was very interesting to get some of those thoughts. Uh, some units, they may be problematic in 4 on 4 or on lower level, such as bat riders with liquid fire or siege engines. I asked him how does he deal uh, with those kind of problematic units without affecting maybe the pro play where they actually don't see a whole lot of play. So he said it's a delicate process. Whenever he can reasonably get away with making a change that affects one level of play, but doesn't affect another, he will be more eager to make such a change. If it does have a risk of affecting other levels of play, he does have to consider that. So some things that are very strong at pro play, but you know you, we don't really see a lot at the lower level, he may be hesitant to make changes there if it's going to affect negatively the uh, lower level players uh, too much. But he does value the pro players a little bit higher because well, their livelihood depends on it. The balancing philosophy and the frequency I didn't quite get a clear answer on that yet. I hope to be able to get that uh, maybe tomorrow because that's going to be pretty interesting. Sometimes balance changes are quite fast. Sometimes to us, they seem too slowly. But Michael did say that he looks to stray away from uh, tiny patches that address uh, one particular race that is deemed overpowered for a short period of time or for a longer period of time. He doesn't just want to go in and do a patch with like three nerfs to let's say Thunderclap, which I believe is due for nerf, and then like two other things. So just taking one race down two or three notches while doing nothing else is neither very creative nor fun. He prefers to add and give so that everyone can try to reimagine their race a little bit. And also, yeah, those, those the, the players of that race, they feel kind of punished if they just get like two, three nerfs. So he generally tries to do a little bit of a bigger pass and he's going to keep doing those developer notes so that we know what's going on in his head. There's a lot more news coming, I'm sure. There's a lot more news out there. I hope you enjoyed some of this news coming from BlizzCon 2019. This was grubby. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again on stream. See you soon. Thanks for watching.